It wasn't about father, it wasn't about father talking to you about long short fields. You know, they're all very beautiful up there. In conflict is beautiful. It's it's very chastening to discover how beauty can become so utterly boring <laughs> after a fortnight's <laughs> period. You know, you keep looking at those lakes, you think it's a marvelous sight. You say, yeah, and three years pass, and you're sitting there waiting for a take to finish. You say to the actor, or actor Susan Hampshire, I mean, isn't that a beautiful lady? She said, you asked me that yesterday. She said, we were all repeating things, but there was nothing else to do, except say how beautiful it was. Uh, so it's very chastening that, isn't it? We long for peace. We don't really long for peace, I don't think so. We long for some kind of contentment and mixture of things. But people don't want to be standing on the edge of Lock room saying how beautiful it is, except for 20 minutes when they first get there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there's a question here. Uh, hi, Tom. Um, I was in a hotel in Nottingham uh, once. I had a really lovely picture of you uh, on the staircase on the way down. I asked at the reception why I had a picture of you there. And they said, well, you were born there. And I was actually you were from Liverpool. So I was wondering if you knew what the connection was. Well, my mother also had a flair for telling lies. <laughs> I inherited that kind of view from her. So she told me I was born in Liverpool, but because she was romantic and everything, it may be that I was born in, in that hotel before it was built, probably, well, on that spot. <laughs> I don't really know, but I'm, I'm quite willing to accept that that is the truth. <laughs> but um, I'll give a thought. Curiously enough, I've been recently investigated by um, how I got used to you. You know, they, they, they expressed an interest and when I said, well, uh, well, who do you think you are? Who do you think you are? How I got used to you? It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> just another question. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so, I thought they got very excited and then, hey, they were, you know, and then they, uh, I told them a few stories about my mother. I didn't mention that I was born in Nottingham. <laughs> and they thought, so they went up a, up a brick wall in Liverpool, and then nothing happened for weeks and weeks, and then they, but they rang up and said, yes, we're making progress into all that kind of thing. And then finally came the dreadful news, you know, my agent rang up and said, Tom, I've got to tell you this. I knew what was coming for it. He said, the whole power of the BBC has been investigating your background, all your, all your antecedents going back to Adam. <laughs> and absolutely nothing of any interest. <laughs> they, said, they said, however, they'd be very interested, we'd send you the files. And so they sent me the files, you know, that would they do to disappoint the people who stop them from cutting a vein. <laughs> and, uh, and so all these files around, which really were kind of uh, just death certificates. <laughs> And, these, and as I was reading them, you know, I think he went into a bloody coma. I mean, he didn't put it out of the program. <laughs> these people, were, it, it, the thing is, in television, it's no use saying, you know, he was born in Nottingham or Liverpool, and he grew up, and, and his parents worked very hard, and were decent, hard-working people, and then they died. <laughs> That's a lot of both of us, you know. But, Bloody hard to make a television program. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's no use having just a gentle, sweet, loving background. I think everybody loved me. It's really lovely when you meet someone and you say, How are you, George? He said, I'm just fine, fine. Yeah. He, she, oh, yeah, I'm very happy. And he said, You know, uh, it's going to be quick because I've only got three days to live. I've just got to go So let me get you a drink. So it's very strange. You've got, it's got to be some distortion. You've got to have a spy or someone's got to be hanged, you know, or someone, you know, murdered a priest or something. They go on. Because what they want also is sad stories. They don't want children's stories. They want the sad story, so that at the end, when the actor, usually an actor, is looking at the footage of the fantasy, bursts into tears. That's what they really want. They really like to burst into tears. Um, that's called television gold. <laughs> <laughs> you can stand that. Okay, I've not found that out a minute ago. Go on. 
I've always loved about how you seem really respectful about what you do and your fans and everything about that. But since you've left the show, has there ever been a time when you wish you could leave the fun? No. No, 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 I'll tell you, no. I was last time I'm looking forward to dying. No. I, why should I uh, wish to get away from uh, happy memories? Why would I wish to avoid a scene like this sweet scene here with, with uh, an old colleague who has such an influence on my career? I mean, this is absolute bliss for me. Um, and also a chair to sit in. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, oh no, I never had any doubts. Or, you know, any doubts. And people said, do you ever wish you could go, people would not mention Doctor Who? Just because you've done other things. You don't mind that, do you? No, I don't. In fact, I've become more reconciled to it because I'm a little older. Yeah. Yeah, that's a bit serious, isn't it? <laughs> 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 it's another question here. Here we go. Um, who would be your favourite Doctor Who actor? Well, me. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a, hello. A person wearing the right scarf. the idea come from? Yeah. Yeah. Well, just out of my poor head, you know, I, uh, I, somebody uh, asked me, uh, I've written a book uh, called uh, Who on Earth is Tom Baker? Seriously, I reread it recently, and I don't recommend it. life in a very bossy way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she said, this won't do. And she read the thing and she said, Tom, don't leave it alone. Don't be alright. Don't bother. And so I read it again and thought, well, yeah. I mean, and then I thought to myself, what possessed me to try and write a story about a good boy? I mean, who's interested in a good boy, you know, who does his homework and never gives his mother any trouble, you know, and, uh, and makes his bed and does his own ironing and then dies. <laughs> no one will believe you, and that's true. So I just simply kept the names and changed the beginning, you know, and said this is the day he was going to die, and the story takes place in one day, I think, uh, and turned it into a vicious someone you just wouldn't want to know. And away it went, you know, and uh, it was very successful, and, uh, and it's in several languages, they tell me. I've got only uh, been sent copies of languages I don't understand. And, uh, and it was then turned into a play last year at the Edinburgh Festival. Uh, and you know, it had a big impact, and some people were throwing up their horror. <laughs> <laughs> it was terrible, absolutely terrible. But it's been successful, yeah. Um, what was that question? <laughs> what was the question? Where did you get the idea from for the boy? Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't know, it just came to me. Yeah. Right, well, there's one last question here, Tom, because you need, it's nearly time you to go. Yeah. Oh, I love moving well. Tom? Tom? Yep. I absolutely adored you as the Legolas Pirate in Black Adam. Did you have many memories of that thing? Yeah, I do remember. Yeah, I got. I, uh, I don't remember. I got on. Uh, what's his name in Black Adam? Yeah, I got on his nerves terribly. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I he actually didn't like what I was doing there. Um, and he kept advising me not to do what I was doing. Um, and so after a while, you know, I took no notice of him and he took no notice of me. Um, and so it wasn't a very happy experience at all. But the other, Stephen Fry, who was a very amiable man, he was very encouraging and one or two other people. 
like what I did. And of course, really, you know, when I look back on it, it's those of you with good memories will realize it was just simply Doctor Who in a big red <laughs> The audience liked it because I think in the first 18 months or something, I've got about nine feet repeat feeds. And I, you know, I was quite expensive in this. Yeah. Uh, but uh, in those days, it was really incredible. And, and, and it's on YouTube, my wife does. Or if it is, she'll probably tell them to put it on YouTube. <laughs> Thanks very much for talking.